What's up ladies and gentlemen, in today's video I'm going to be showing you everything that you need to get started learning game dev in 2025. Okay, so the first thing that we have on our list is Unity here. Now you've probably heard of Unity. Unity is like the go-to for most game devs. It is highly accessible and easy to find information on, on how to get started. There are countless YouTube tutorials. I'm sure that you've heard of a little guy named Brackies. If you haven't and you want to learn Unity, look up Brackies YouTube channel. And as we scroll down the page here, we can see that they have lots of learning. They have different plans, lots of different ways to learn. Um, so if you look, they have a resources page shows you all sorts of resources for creating your games and just different pages showing what all it's about. They have a guide for animation, as you see, talking about how to choose your engine for mobile. It's been around for a long time and it's created games such as Seven Days to Die and Hollow Knight is another big title that was created using Unity. As you see here, they have a community that you can join talk about I guess just discuss different game dev stuff really anything from how to implement mechanics or what's new coming to unity and another good thing about unity is they have a competitive pricing model you see they have a free model they have free for personal um, now moving on to the big triple a game engine we're talking about unreal engine 5 now unreal engine 5 is an amazing engine but <clears throat> from my personal experience, for you to have a really good time using Unreal Engine, I'm not going to hold anything back. I think you have to have a powerful PC. <laughs> not only do you need a good graphics card, but having an SSD and fast hard drive is also very important. But Unreal Engine does have the best graphics out of the box. That is one thing it has going for it. So if we take a look at the features here... <laughs> You see it can create games for PC, console, mobile, VR, and AR. Gives you everything you need to get started. Um, it has C++ programming as its language, but a lot of people are now using Blueprints, which is a visual scripting system to create your games. Which personally, me being a coder, if you've watched my channel before, I prefer C++, but I have dabbled with uh, the Blueprints a little bit. <laughs> Here they have uh, Unreal Engine 5.5. They have its documentation. And while the documentation is getting better and better, I do have to say that Unity still has better documentation. But Unreal Engine is working to actively make this a little bit better. Slowly over time, it's improving. And will hopefully get up to par. They also, as you see, do have a learning tab. Where you can go here and you can look around and it shows you how to make all sorts of different systems and whatnot in Unreal. However, I found that most of the learning stuff has to do with, uh, like if you, at least if you're trying to learn to code, has to do with visual blueprints. And personally, I like C++. So, you know, take it for what it is. They do have a uh, marketplace as well, which is now switched over to Fab, where it used to be a Megaquixel. But it does have a lot of place, uh, a lot of assets. And right now you can get a lot of assets for free, I believe for a limited time but I do believe that will be um, changing but uh, Unreal Engine is the most generous of the game engines that take royalties that will let you keep your money up until one million dollars in revenue as you see here that is very nice so if you don't make a million dollars you get to keep all your all your money <laughs> then for their seat based uh, program there you can pay for a seat it's a little higher but I think if you're making money like that, it's worth it. Now we're moving on to everybody's free open source game engine, Godot, of course. Now, Godot has recently been improving a lot in the last few months, I should say. It is now version 4.3, and Godot has its own easy-to-use programming language called GDScript, which is similar to Python, really similar. However, it also has bindings for other languages and also has support for C Sharp, which is personally what I use when I use Godot. I, I like the uh, syntax of C Sharp better than GD Script, but that's just personal preference. But if you do use uh, C Sharp with it, you will get better performance due to the compiler. 
So they have a strong community, as you can see here. They have forums, Discord, Reddit. Everybody loves Godot. And yes, I know. There was some drama with the uh, one of the people in the Godot founding members or something, their manager, something like that. But personally, I don't really keep up with the politics of it too much. I just use the game engine for the engine that it is. They have some docs which have been updated. And if you find some problems, you know, people can report them. With it being open source, you know, it's, it's community driven a lot and relies on community to help with a lot of things. So while it's improving, it may not be quite up to par with Unity or Unreal. Now moving on to the next game engine, but it's not really a game engine. It's a framework. Here comes the frameworks. This is Pygame. It's become more popular over the years. It uses Python. And while me personally, I'm not a Python person. Uh, like I said, it's growing in popularity. A lot of people like it. Um, uh, I don't like Python. I don't like using Python. But apparently a lot of people, such as the Fluffy Potato, like this. So here's their documentations on how to install. But other than that, I don't know that much about it. Because personally, I like C++ and C Sharp. But yeah, check out Pygame if you're interested in that. Now we're on to SFML. And if you're not new to my channel, if you've been here for a while, you know SFML is what I use to build up my channel. And I enjoy SFML a lot. It's a multi-platform framework that it's really low level. It basically handles rendering and input. And um, as far as learning resources go, how I personally learned is I used books. But for any of these frameworks or really engines or anything, I always recommend getting a Udemy course. If you can throw up the funds. If not, there's still some YouTube tutori tutorials available. Um... On here, they do have some documentation as well that shows you, with, depending on which version you select, depending on which version of SFML you have, it can show you how to do certain things in it. But SFML is good if you want to learn how to work at a low level and just generally understand how game engines work and you want to have more control over rendering and whatnot. But beware, SFML out of the box cannot export to console. Just keep that in mind when you're doing stuff. It cannot export to console. <laughs> But, you know, they have guides on getting it started for Visual Studio and Codeblocks. And, hey, I got some tutorials on how to set it up with Visual Studio and Codeblocks if you want to see how it's done. But, yeah, they got documentations and all that um, showing you basically how everything works. And it's a pretty good place. They got a pretty good community. I'm, I've joined their uh, Discord. And here you can see all the different bindings for other languages, which I've never tried. GitHub repository and whatnot. I built it from source and I've downloaded the binaries and installed it. If you want to try this and use C++ and you get stuck, look at some of my tutorials. It'll help you a lot. But that's really all, all I got to say about SFML. It's a really good framework. So without further ado, let's go into the final framework I'll be covering in this video. All right, now we'll be talking about our final framework that we'll be covering in the video. Mono game, of course. Mono game comes from XNA, which was used for the Xbox 360 to create games on the arcade marketplace back in the day. It is cross-platform anywhere from Windows, Mac, Linux, Android, iOS, iPad OS, PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Xbox One, and Nintendo Switch. So if you want a platform or a low-level framework that you can use and have more control over than a game engine, but also be able to put on any platform. Mono game is going to be your go-to. And also, mono game is free. So not only do you get to keep all your money, but you can export to any platform. They've got some documentations, some good API references, a few tutorials. While I have noticed I haven't been able to find as many tutorials with it, I've been recently working with mono game to create my latest game, which I plan on putting on lots of different consoles you know different platforms i want to go on pc but i also want to be able to go to console as well so they have a roadmap put out which tells you what they're bringing and personally i feel like it takes quite a while for them to get uh you know the updates coming in but however it's a proven framework and they received a, a large donation during the unity problem you know what i'm talking about if you've been watching game news but when all that drama was going on with unity they got some donations 
So here you can see they got forums, GitHub discussions, a Discord. I haven't checked out the Discord, so I can't tell you how it is. I read it, a Facebook community. Um, and Twitter and YouTube, but Twitter is now X, I suppose. But some of the games that's been made, like I said, it's Celeste. Um, some of these I haven't heard of. I don't keep up with all the indie game news, but Celeste is a big one. The biggest one you've probably heard of is Stardew Valley. Um, I'm trying to think. Celeste, Stardew Valley, and some of these I'm sure you've heard of. I don't keep up with the news. You can see as I scroll down, Axiom Verge. Yeah, also on Axiom Verge as well. It's a really good game. Metroidvania style game. So, um... Mono game can handle delivering on these platforms as long as you know how to code. Um, I would say it's a little bit harder to use than SFML due to its framework, but overall, it is a really good framework, and it's kind of what I'm working with now to get the most out of cross-platform. I do enjoy Godot, but mono game is what I'm making my game in currently, and I'll, we'll see how much I like it when I get done. Now I will show you the following this video like I'm just showing you a little bit of merch right now now here comes the tools you can use to create games or to create assets for your games so without further ado here comes the tool section of the video all right so the first uh, tool we're gonna be covering is something to make music we're gonna be talking about LMMS so LMMS is a open source, well I don't know if it's open source, excuse me, it's a free to use, I, be, I believe it is open source, free to use music creation software. Best I can say, like I've used it a little bit, it's similar to Fruity Loops if you've ever used it, known as like FL Studio, but it's free. So if you have a knack for creating music and you don't want to buy an expensive program, don't want to pay an artist, you want to make the music yourself, then I recommend LMMS. They, as you can see, they have forums and whatnot so you can kind of ask people about stuff but generally on here it's pretty easy to use i would recommend youtube if you really want to figure out how to use it i would recommend using youtube look up a few tutorials but this is for your music software now while we're talking about sounds we'll go ahead and cover audacity audacity is going to be our next thing that we use in our toolkit and it's not really like a music creating software, even though you can use it to work with music and stuff. Uh, it's more for recording voice and whatnot and different sounds. I personally use it and some of its uh, effects to create sound effects for the game. I find that's what it really shines at for me is creating sound effects and whatnot. So that is going to be our next tool that we use. It's really simple to use. Lots of YouTube tutorials on it. Now for our final tool we will be covering in today's video is a sprite. This is for pixel art. Now, if you're going to be creating a game with a low-level framework, not necessarily, but probably, or even using a game engine, a lot of you may start with 2D stuff and want to use pixel art. This is what I use for pixel art. A Sprite is, I, I originally used something called Pixel Edit, but after trying A Sprite, A Sprite has to be my favorite. And as you see, it costs $19.99. If you're tech savvy, you can legally build a sprite from scratch. They provide the source code, but it is kind of difficult to do. But if you're tech savvy and don't mind a challenge, uh, consulting chat GPT and all that and looking up guides online, it can be built for free. So you don't even have to pay anything if you build it from source. They have a good community for a sprite who shows you how to do all sorts of things, talks about stuff, you know, give feedback. But generally for pixel art, you know, as I would say, I would recommend YouTube or a Udemy course that covers the basics of pixel art and how to get you started, but you know how art is. It's going to take practice to get better, but knowing the basics and a little bit of color theory can get you a long way. So if you guys enjoyed this video and it helped you out, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, comment below what was your favorite thing about it, and it really does help a lot by doing this, but thank you guys for your time and I'll see you guys in the next video. If you have any questions, uh, just comment them below. And also I'll have a link to my Discord below if you want to join in the description. So thank you guys, and I will see you later. Take care.